Over the past month or so, we've seen some great promotions of players from Tier 2 to the Overwatch League, with the Vancouver Titans assembling their new Western roster from Second Wind and other contender sites, whilst the impressive Team Doge DPS duo of Kevster and Onigod have now been picked up by the LA Gladiators and Dallas Fuel respectively. Indeed, most of the focus on Western contenders' talent has seemed to centre on the three strongest sides in North America, Team Doge, Third Impact and Second Wind. Today though I want to focus on the EU contenders team British Hurricane as I think they have perhaps been overlooked, especially having just completed an undefeated first 2020 contender season, unlike any of the NA sites or even some of the more dominant teams from around the world like Talent Esports in the Pacific region. The British Hurricane have a rich history in the Tier 2 European scene, making their debut in EU contenders at the start of 2018, and that same season they would in fact go on to claim first place with players like Craggy, Kib, Fusions and Haffy Cool in their lineup. The Hurricane would follow this up with a fantastic showing at the Atlantic Showdown against Fusion University where they ended up triumphing 3-1, handing their opponents one of their only losses throughout the year of 2018. For the past two years the British Hurricane have been considered as one of the top three teams in Europe alongside Team Gigante and the Angry Titans, but since their initial success at the start of 2018 they failed to repeat this achievement, enduring a rough remainder of 2018 where they even spent a season relegated to contenders trials before struggling to find a way past Human Gigante and the Angry Titans in 2019. Two years on from their only title however, there's been plenty of change in the European landscape, with Team Gigante disbanding their Overwatch contenders team at the end of 2019, whilst the Angry Titans followed suit earlier this year. With the EU scene firmly up for grabs after the surprising showings of Clockwork Vendetta and HSL Esports the season prior, a slightly altered Hurricane side consisting of the DPS duo of Danad and Sparker, a tank pairing of Hadi and Molfic, and lastly a support line of Jofi and the newly acquired Ripper after his release from the LA Gladiators, now had their eyes set on a return to glory in 2020. The journey towards this goal started at the end of 2019, where the team competed in and won the first Open Division Breakable Barriers tournament winning all four of her matches 3-0 along the way, with a victory over the Raspberry Racers in the final. Next came the seeding tournament for the first 2020 season of Contenders itself, where the British Hurricane continued to build up their momentum. Yet again they won all of their matches, only dropping one map to Shoes Money Crew in the winner's semi-final during what was otherwise a completely dominant bracket run, that saw them earn the number one seed after a 3-0 victory over the reigning EU Contenders champions, HSL Esports. Their first big test though would come during Contenders Week 1 where they had to face an impressive on paper Eternal Academy side that featured players like Suna who last year was a member of the Hurricane and recently has now been acquired by the Vancouver Titans. The two sides went back and forth in a really competitive 5 map series but on the final map Ilios a back cap by Dan Ed Sombra proved to be decisive after the Eternal wasted their rally with the Hurricane going on to win the final team fight that secured them the series. Their assistant coach Elbion would later say in an interview that with their victory over the Eternal Academy, the Hurricane had made a statement that they were the best team in Europe. They of course still had one hurdle to overcome, the week 1 final that had them scheduled against Shoes Money Crew, and although the team came in as clear favourites to come out on top, a disastrous series of events almost ended their perfect 2020 run before it had even really gotten started. Just before the teams headed on to map 1, Ilios, it was announced that one of the players on the Hurricane side of things was having some technical issues, and so this stream went to a break. 15 minutes later, the match finally resumed, but by this time, not only did the Hurricane have to forfeit the opening map, but with Dana's power cut still unresolved, the team now to sub in their head coach Unter, whilst moving Ripper over to DPS from support, just to avoid forfeiting the whole series. British Hurricane's team manager Nuki would explain afterwards what happened in more detail. Dan had had a power outage at his house, and since it wasn't resolved after 5 minutes, he packed up his computer with his brother and they carried it 15 minutes down the street to his mum's house where they still had power, they rebuilt it and he was able to play from there. Under's emergency substitution was to more than anything just buy time, especially as he was playing with over 300 ping and even disconnected for the first half of his team's King's Row defence. SMC dominated the map, full holding their own defence to go 2-0 up in the series, forcing the British Hurricane to reverse sweep if they wanted to keep their hopes of victory alive. At last Dan had got back online and with his return the Hurricane noticeably levelled up and took control of the series. On first Havana and then Horizon Lunar Colony, the team put on a defensive clinic not allowing their opponents to achieve a single point of progress, meaning that before we knew it the series was tied up at 2 all. At this point momentum had completely swung back in the Hurricane's favour and with two back to back round wins on the pool, the British Hurricane survived this massive scare claiming the series 3-2 and thus winning EU contenders week 1. For me, this result really defined the quality of the players and coaches on this team. Some others in this situation would have seen these obstacles as too big of a mountain to climb and consequently crumbled, but not the Hurricane. Although stress levels would have been unbelievably high, they maintained their composure, 
bought the time they needed for their team rate to return to action, and then almost immediately displayed their full quality and potential to then dominate the series, as most have been predicting in the build-up to it. With no such dramas appearing over the next three weeks, you can safely assume what happened next, as the Hurricane kept up their momentum and continued to dominate the European contenders scene. First in week 2, they convincingly made their way to the final once again with 3-0 sweeps over both Clockwork Vendetta as well as Sheer Colt. In the final, they were once again the favourites, and this time made things a lot easier with a 3-1 triumph over Young and Beautiful. Week 3 in many ways played out in an almost identical fashion to week 2. First, they advanced through the courses and semis with 3-0 wins over Shoes Money Crew and Disaster. This time they faced Sheer Cold in the final, and although their opponents got off to a strong start, winning the control map, it did not take long for the British Hurricane to establish their dominant selves in the series, eventually taking the match 3-1 and securing their third contenders week in a row, but had now seen their match win record in 2020 contenders extend to 13 games unbeaten. Heading into week 4, again the team got off to a great start with a 3-0 quarterfinal victory over Samson Morningstars, before again eliminating disaster at the semi-final stage with a 3-0 sweep. With an unbeaten regular season on the line, however, they now had to face Young and Beautiful in the Week 4 final, a rematch of their Week 2 affair. Unlike last time though, Young and Beautiful came into this contest a lot stronger, with their DPS duo of Jonah and Yikits looking particularly lethal on the Tracer Echo DPS comps that were being played that week. What followed was one of the Hurricane's toughest matches all season, with the two sides evenly trading blows throughout the series. Map 5 would once again head to Ilios, which appeared to be a lucky map for the British Hurricane this past contender's season as despite losing the first round, they dominated the second, before eventually taking the third, thereby winning the map of us the series 3-2, confirming the Hurricane as the only undefeated team throughout all regions contenders regular seasons. An unbeaten regular season meant nothing however if the British Hurricane didn't show up for the playoffs, but after all this team had gone through, achieving success in any meta that came their way and overcoming any challenge their opponents posed, there only seemed to be one eventual outcome. Convincingly, they marched their way through the winner's bracket quarter-final, semi-final and final, all with 3-1 wins over the Raspberry Racers, then Shoes Money Crew and lastly X Oblivion. This set them up for a grand final rematch against the Raspberry Racers, who had enjoyed a Cinderella lower bracket run to the final after being eliminated at the start of the playoffs by the Hurricane. In many ways, looking back at the British Hurricane's run, it's almost poetic that they started it all with a win over the Raspberry Racers in the final of the Open Division Breakable Barriers tournament, and here they were again, six months on, in yet another final. The difference between the two sides had already been highlighted multiple times up to this point however, and a clutch turnaround at the end of Ilios to steal the first map really set the tone for the Hurricane. This meant that the Cinderella run had to come to an end, with the British Hurricane triumphing 4-1 to claim the EU Contenders 2020 Season 1 crown. If my maths is correct, that's a winning run of 20 or more games, which is an astonishing feat in of itself, never mind the fact that nearly all of these matches were in a knockout setting, adding even more pressure. It makes me wonder why there hasn't been more said about the British Hurricane and their success when there have been conversations about the Tier 2 scene. I think Europe's international showings in 2019 have probably been part of the problem, with both the Atlantic Showdown and the Gauntlet seeing poor performances from the EU teams involved. But I also think that perhaps people underestimate how difficult it is to remain unbeaten this long. Even if you believe that the British Hurricane are in a very weak contenders region compared to NA, I would argue Talon were as well, and yet despite their two year dominance over their region, they still have a loss on their record this year. I also believe this is a sentiment that does a disservice to the quality of teams like Young and Beautiful for instance in the European contenders scene. If British Hurricane went up against top NA teams like the old team Doge or Third Impact, I'd give them a fantastic chance of winning. Nuki has even described how with so many OWL teams on the east coast of America this year, the British Hurricane have had the opportunity to scrim some OWL teams, meaning that they are not only dominating the teams in their EU contenders region, but are getting beaten in a decent number of scrims to OWL opponents, which not only has made learning easier for the team, but it also prevents them from becoming complacent, a quality that I think will only enhance this team moving forward. To end, I want to quickly say a sentence or two about each of the players on this roster, because I certainly think they deserve more recognition and genuine consideration amongst other contenders players than they've perhaps earned up to now. Let's start with the DPS players, and indeed Sparker. This man has been playing a sick tracer all season long, that has really come up clutch for the Hurricane when they've needed him to. He's also shown that he's an adaptable hitscan, with some strong displays on Ash and McCree also. Being 17, he's still one year away from being eligible, but he's certainly a player to keep an eye on moving forward. His partner, Danet, meanwhile, has been a jack of all trades for this team this season, serving as an excellent compliment to Sparker through a wide hair pull that's seen him pop off and dominate his competition on Doomfist, Sombra, 
and Echo as well as others, at least while he's got power to his PC that is. Moving on to the tank line, this has certainly been a very big strength for the British Hurricane this year, as evidenced by Haddy's MVP award for the past contender season. The main tank has been a pillar of impressive consistency, whether the team has asked him to play the important Orissa in their double shield comps, or instead let him loose on Ryan and Wrecking Ball, and he's always been a player the team can rely upon, with his MVP award simply emphasising that further. Molfig, meanwhile, has been a player at off-tank that I have personally been praising since the World Cup and before the 2020 OWL season began. At the end of last year, he was one of my standout Sigma performers at the contenders level, with some great displays at the World Cup on Team Denmark, even against some of the top teams like China and South Korea. In 2020, he has only gone from strength to strength, with a high level of Sigma play being shown off alongside a great Diva and Zarya that has established Molfig and Hadi as a clear number one tank pairing in EU contenders. Then we move on to the supports, where Jofi has been a quiet but very important member of the lineup. Like every good main support, he doesn't always make the flashy plays, but does all the little hidden things that really help this roster excel, whether that be using Lucio boots to set up his tanks, or utilising brick stuns and armour to perfectly support his team both offensively and defensively. Finally we come to Ripper, who after being dropped by the LA Gladiators has really proven that his time on the bench hasn't affected his overall level of play one bit. Instead, if anything, it has only made him hungrier for success, and his Baptiste and Zen player especially have been top notch all season. A last mention also to Elbion and Commander X. I can't give specifics, obviously, but if you're on a coaching staff that oversees a team play perfectly for half a year, you must be doing a lot of things right. So they as coaches also deserve a lot of credit as well as the players for the British Hurricane's success so far in 2020. To bring this all to a close, the British Hurricane have enjoyed what has honestly been a remarkable season. Hopefully this video has shown the journey they've taken in 2020 and highlighted the players themselves, as I certainly believe this is a side that deserves a lot more respect and recognition than perhaps they've been given up to this point. As a little announcement to end this video, and as a push for creating more tier 2 content on my channel moving forward, I've decided that either every week or every other week I'll be trying to post a contenders theme video on Tuesdays, so hopefully people enjoy what I have planned for the months ahead. On that note though, that's all I've got to say on the British Hurricane, and if you have reached the end of the video then I'd like to say a big thank you for watching. I'll be back over the next couple of days with my preview and prediction videos ahead of a summer showdown, so if you have enjoyed, then please be sure to like and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter and Discord so you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time though, stay safe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.